Could the authors of the Gospels have written their Gospels with inspiration by the Holy Spirit without talking to eyewitnesses? So if the Holy Spirit is just like taking over the body of the people and directing them to write this exact thing, then obviously they, um, the writers do not need to depend on eyewitnesses. What if the writer wrote but something which is a known lie, would the Holy Spirit have not corrected them? Yeah. The whole start of this conversation, yeah. he's not allowed to use the Quran or Islam. Mm. He's got to, on its own merits. No, if yes, can't hide behind Islam. I'm an agnostic. No, no, no. Can't hide behind... Can't, 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 you can't, 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 can't hide behind it. Let us ask questions. Listen, we agree. No, we agree. No, allow us no. to ask questions. No, we agreed. Allow us to we ask questions. Listen, listen, listen. We agreed. Can, no you, Quran. You can ask no Islam. as many... If the Gospel of Matthew can be shown to be a liar, yeah, can be shown to be a liar, I'm not saying he's a liar to you yet because I'm not proving nothing yet, then the author of that Gospel cannot have been inspired by God unless you think God allows lies to be put in his book. Okay. Yeah? And it also means then that if the author of that book is a liar, you shouldn't really hold um, verbatim to the things, other things he says. You would verify what he says with other people. Okay. Yeah? Okay. I'm not that. All right. Okay. So why is Matthew a liar? Hello? Okay. Yeah. So, um, I question why you Christians believe the, the Bible is a reliable source of information. So, I will start you on that, because I, I do want to understand it. Most Christians change the subject, start, why do you believe the Quran is the word of Allah? I really would like you to answer the question without mentioning Islam, if you could possibly do that. Without mentioning the Quran, just on merit. So, just imagine I'm an agnostic, yeah? Why should I believe, like you believe, that the Bible is a reliable source of information? Okay. Um, I would say for two main points, directly and indirectly, I'll start with the direct one, um, is because church tradition leads me to understand that the Gospels were based on eyewitness testimony. And so if we're not taking a form critical um, sort of model, um, such as Bultmann in, um, in the 30s, 40s, where it was very prominent, where you get it a lot now with Bart Ehrman, when they say, okay, that it took a lot of time for the Gospels to, to evolve and the message took time, then finally it was written down by these anonymous people. Um, if we take more the testimonial model, which um, harkens the book of Matthew to be based on eyewitness testimony, Mark to be the interpreter of Peter, okay, Luke to be, um, a, he wasn't a, a direct disciple of Jesus, but he was someone who collected the eyewitness testimony, so he went around interviewing eyewitnesses and then collected it into a historical This is Luke? Yes, Luke. And then um, the book of John, where it actually attests to the person who wrote it, he says himself he was an eyewitness. And so if we're taking that approach, which I favour, I would say that it's based on um, eyewitness testimony, so I can take it as a reliable source. Okay. Um, so then in, my indirect sort of approach would be that even if I don't look at um, the Gospels themselves for um, the evidence that they are based on eyewitness testimony, if I can then establish the res resurrection of Jesus, okay, which authenticates his teaching, um, then I can direct, I can then directly apply that to um, the other narratives of Jesus. So I can take an indirect approach. First show that the resurrection outside of the gospel can But you only know, but you, all right, okay, okay. Yeah, all right, do you understand right. what I'm saying? I understand. So basically what you're saying is, yes. you believe the Bible is a reliable source of information because the church fathers tell you, or church tradition tells you, that the gospels, the ones who wrote the gospels, weren't I, they weren't eyewitnesses themselves, but they heard it from eyewitnesses. No, so you can take internally, um, you can look at the Gospels and say, well, do they themselves try to test No, 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 let's go the other way around first. Well, why should so, I read these Gospels? Are these Gospels from yeah. eyewitnesses or not? Yes, so that's... Because what this whole resurrection business is coming from the Gospels. No, no, I'm not talking about that one. I'm trying to answer your question. No, but you just said, you said, if the, the resurrection, then I can go back. No, the, first, yeah. look, can I? the story of the resurrection okay. is in the Gospels. Yes. All right, so just so I can establish the principle that yes. you're applying here, you're saying because the Gospels are 
not necessarily eyewitness testimony of the authors of the gospel, but are from other eyewitness testimony from people around. Okay, so the only person I can say who was a, a direct eyewitness who actually wrote the gospels probably would be um, the Gospel of John. But the ones that I can say that are people who weren't direct eyewitnesses but collected the information would be the other Gospels. Right. And there is no issue with that. With someone who's a historian going to interview people who are eyewitnesses, there's no issue with that, even if the person's not a direct person. Right. What if the author of the Gospel lied? How would you know? Yes. So if the author of the Gospel lied, okay, I obviously will have to try and understand or try and see if there's any external evidence that showed that he lied. Right. No, but if it, if it is shown that he lied, if it is shown that he lied, then what? Can I, can I say first? Yeah, I can. Okay. So, first you've got to establish what is your starting position when you're looking at, at the text. If you assume, which most people do, you assume the principle of charity and the principle of testimony, that first you assume the reliability of the text unless it's proven to be unreliable. Then you can start doubting it. And so unless you can then give me information which shows that the text is unreliable, then we will need to then start saying, okay, I need to doubt the witness of this text. No, no, no. Text. I understand what I'm saying. Okay. That, that comes secretary. Okay. Uh, if, if I accuse something of somebody, first yes. of all, I'm asking you the, giving you the accusation mm -hmm. on what's the result of of that. Yes. So if, if, I, if I say to you what if the, one of the gospel writers mm -hmm. can be proven or can be shown mm -hmm. to be lying, yeah. can you still rely on that writer's gospel? Oh yes, yes, of course. Even if he's a liar? Yes. Well, first you have to say, is he lying completely? In all How would you text? know if he's lying? Yes, because that's why historians utilise a criteria, a criteria of authenticity. Where they, one second, they use a criterion to try and understand what is reliable or not. So if you go to some historians, they might say a specific text in its totality might not be completely reliable, but there might be segments of it which we can say is reliable. Right, right. So what you're saying, so what criteria. you basically said to me then, yeah. if the author of one of the Gospels mm -hmm. is known to lie, you can accept the things that can't be proven he's lied about. Is that what you're basically saying? So, even if, even if someone might not be telling the truth in one aspect, okay, of what they're writing, it does not then mean the whole thing that they've said, if they've written quite a long narrative or something, is completely false. Right, and then okay. how, right, then here's the point, you see, yes. if you know someone's a liar, mm -hmm. How are you going to know what else he's lied about? Well, firstly, you have to know, you have to establish, is he always lying when he writes? How would you I know? Think, yes, exactly. So that's why you will never assume that every single thing that he's written is completely false. Because then if you look at someone like Josephus, yeah. okay, Josephus yeah. Um, yeah. is not, um, by historians who study his work, um, has been shown to be quite fallacious Sorry. in some of the things that he said when he was uh, speaking about the wars during the um, first century. Yeah. So some of the things that he um, he was shown to be quite false on. But that doesn't mean all of his works are completely false. Just because maybe in some aspects he might have, you know, um, added some hyperbole or something like that, it doesn't mean then that every single thing else that he's written is completely false. No, but how would you or know? The, exactly. So you utilise a criteria. Right. And that allows you to say that there is a bedrock of information which we can say is definitely reliable. Really? So let's say, um, let's say we were assuming, I don't believe the Gospels are under but let's say a writer, you know, let's say Matthew lied about something, okay, in, in the Gospels or, or Luke or something. Funny, funny you should say Matthew, but carry on. One second. Let's say Matthew, Luke or one of the Gospel writers lied about something, okay. We can then doubt that and say, okay, what he said there is completely false. But then that doesn't mean that, let's say, the baptism, which we can then um, utilise the criteria of embarrassment, of dissimilarity and things like that. We can't then just say that that is also false itself. But if the and author so, lied, yes. could he be inspired by the Holy Spirit? Sorry? If an author has lied mm -hmm. about something, can he be inspired by the Holy Spirit? Well, first, you have to say, has he lied or not? No, no, be, no, no. One second. It could be that he's mistaken. Or lied. Someone could, yes, it could be. That. But I'm, I'm, using, I'm, not, I'm yes. not saying mistaken. I'm saying he's lied. Yes. All right. I'm saying he's embellished. Mm -hmm. All right. Could he be inspired by the Holy Spirit and lie? Could he be inspired by the Holy Spirit and lie? Um, I would doubt that because I think... So if we can prove yes. one of the Gospel writers lied, then he wasn't inspired by the Holy Spirit. Would you accept well, that? If, no, because then firstly you will have to close all the options and say that it, maybe he was mistaken, maybe the source that he utilised when he was writing was faulty. And him himself... So the eyewitness testimony was faulty? One second. Him himself might have not been, might have not had the purpose of lying, of distorting the data. Do you, do you believe, but, do you believe sorry, the Gospel... Loads of things that, can I say yeah, go on, go on. Okay. Because you're trying to say that if the only option we should take, the reasonable option, is lying, 
way. Well, I'm saying actually it could be that he was simply mistaken. Okay. And if he's simply mistaken, the Holy Spirit could still be inspiring him when he is giving out the testimony. Right. Can and the so, Holy Spirit inspire mistakes? Sorry, can the Holy Spirit? Yes. 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 So, so the Holy Spirit's not perfect. One second. It depends what your mode of inspiration is. Because obviously in other um, religious uh, texts, some people believe it's plenary inspiration, that it's direct. What do you believe? I'm asking to you, Josh. Okay. What do you do? You believe? Do you believe the author of the Gospels? Well, hey. listen, listen. listen. Yeah, I have to. I have to narrow this down now. Yeah, but I mean, every time I'm trying to say my point, you cut me in with another no, point. No, and I can. It's the same point. It's the same point. It's the same point. Can I same point. Can I say my point? Yeah, different from what he's done. Different stuff. Okay. Can I say my point? You don't know what I'm asking. Okay, so give somebody else a chance to ask something. Give somebody else a chance. So yeah, like I was trying to say, depends the mode of inspiration. Um, some uh, holy texts that people hold to, they hold to plenary inspiration, direct inspiration, that this is the unaltered word of God given to someone, okay, and it's just written down. Okay, and some people did hold to that in the early um, in the early church that that was the mode of inspiration of Scripture, but the consensus now is that that is not the mode of inspiration. Right. The Holy Spirit inspired these writers, but it wasn't that these writers were not writing within their context, within their own mode of um, uh, writing, and the way that they, their stylistic um, ideas that they added to the text. The Holy Spirit could have still been leading them when they were doing that. And so, if it is a direct inspiration, then if there is, if the writer is a faulty vessel that the Holy Spirit's utilizing, then of course you've got to say the Holy Spirit is an inspiration. Okay, okay. But if that mode of inspiration is the one that I'm saying on the latter one, then there is no issue with that um, right. inspiration. Rate. Just so I understand. Yes. Could the authors of the Gospels have written their Gospels in, with inspiration by the Holy Spirit without talking to eyewitnesses? Without talking to eyewitnesses. Could they have written it completely? Yes, they could have. That's a logical possibility. They could have. Problem. Yes. They didn't need eyewitnesses. They could have. If it was in that mode. Of no, no. I'm going. I'm, yes. I'm just trying to understand this inspiration by God. Yes. I'm trying to understand this, right? So, do, do they need eyewitnesses, or can the Holy Spirit tell them everything that happened? Okay. Well, first, your question was: Was it possible? Yes, it's a logical possibility that that could have happened. But is it a plausible option? Probably not. Right. So I would say it's implausible that that would have been the way that they no, my, my question, wrote their text. No, because you need to specify. What you no, said. no. My question is: Possible. Why? Why? Would would you need eyewitness? Eye My question is very simple. Why would yes. you need eyewitness testimony if the Holy Spirit is telling you what happened? Ah, yes, but then you're assuming that mode of inspiration, which, All right. said, which is no longer the case now. Yes. Right. So okay. if the Holy Spirit is just like taking over the body of the people and directing them to write this exact thing, then obviously they, um, the writers do not need to depend on eyewitness. Right. What if the writer wrote but, something which is a known lie? Would the Holy Spirit have not corrected them? Can you say that for you? Sorry. If the writer wrote something which was a lie, mm -hmm. would the Holy Spirit have not corrected them? Um, maybe not. It depends what no. the purpose. It depends the purpose of the inspiration that the Spirit was trying to. So the Holy the Spirit then allows lies. It depends, like I said. It depends how um, the inspiration, the purpose of the inspiration of the Holy Spirit is given. So you, if you just say, if you're then again assuming that every single thing, if there's one single mistake, okay, then it is not an inspiration by the Holy Spirit. Then there is a problem. No, my question would be, why did the Holy Spirit not correct the mistake? Because maybe the, the purpose, you have to then try and say, what is the purpose of Scripture itself? Was it to have every single Hey, what happened? Thing? What's the purpose of the Gospels? One second, can I finish? What's the purpose of the Gospels? Can I finish? Was it for every single thing to be exactly accurate? No single thing. What was thing? the purpose of the Gospels? It couldn't have been one error. But that, then, if it was if it was just one singular gospel, okay, that was mistaken, then you could then say that the Holy Spirit wouldn't have inspired that. But if there is, like we have, other gospels which allow us to say that maybe this wasn't a correct historical fact, and then we can then still hold to that being inspired by God. I don't see the issue there. Okay. But, the, issue, the issue is simple. If you don't see this issue... One second. One second. If you don't see this issue... One second. One second. Can I, one second. If you can't see this issue, then uh, there's a serious problem in what you believe. Why? Okay. Yes. You're saying to me now, even if yes. the author of one of my Gospels mm -hmm. is proven liar, mm -hmm. I can still accept the other things he says. And even if the Holy Spirit didn't correct him in his uh, lie, or didn't show him it was a lie, yeah, it doesn't matter, we can still accept the rest of what he says. That's what you're saying. Okay, but again, like I said, you use the terms, you use your words correctly, you said proven, that means that there has to be a probability of one. 
that this person is a liar, which you cannot do in historical No, what I can do, no, no, what I can do, yes. I can say I believe he was a liar. Yes. The reasons I believe he was a liar is this, this, this and this. Yes. If you cannot refute this, this, this and this, then my belief is stronger than what you believe. How is it stronger than you believe? Because I give you reasons, now you have to refute my reasons. If you can't challenge my reasons... But so, so, okay. If, you're, if one person you're dialoguing with yeah. does not have the exact information that can allow them to show that you're... You don't need the exact information now. It doesn't mean on the spot. Exactly. So, if I don't have it, it doesn't mean then that you are correct in what okay. you're holding. All right. If you, and it, so, yes. So if you if listen you to went, this whole conversation... One second. What did I say at the very, very beginning? One second. If it is proven. Yes. All right, okay. Mm -hmm. So, I want to know, mm -hmm. when I do this, mm -hmm. when I show you my reasons why one of the gospel writers is a clear liar, when I do this, what will your reaction be? Now, from what I've seen, mm -hmm. you don't care if he's a liar. Why? Because you just said, don't matter. No, because said, I don't matter. So you said? Because I said to you that you are again closing the options, that it could simply be a mistake. No, 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 I didn't so, say that, did I? Did second. I say, did I say if the author makes That's a mistake? I didn't say that, did exactly. I? Exactly. Right. So, so don't, don't keep saying mistake, no, I said lie. Exactly. Which is deliberate. And exactly, you're doing that. And you're actually showing what I'm trying to say. You are only closing the options and saying the only thing that it's plausible explanation of, no, of no, no. this. No, no, no. say that. One second. The only plausible explanation of this text here is that the writer was a liar. Right. When I'm saying to you, actually, it could simply be that it was based, it was a mistake. Right. And so then, it doesn't refute the point of inspiration. No, no, no. There's the two problems. No, two problems it's is there. This, um, one. Yes. I said liar, not mistake. Yes. So what I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying it's deliberate. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's accidental. Yes. All right. Now you're saying mistake. Even if it's a mistake, there's still a problem because if the Holy Spirit allows mistakes, what are the other mistakes made by that same writer? That's the question. Because if you start quoting this guy now, how do you know they're not mistakes, which haven't been corrected? Because apparently yes. the Holy Spirit allows mistakes. Yes. But let's say, one second. Let's say, what is the criteria? You're utilising the criteria to try and show that this, the plausible, the most probable explanation of this, is that the person who wrote it is a liar. You're utilising That's my claim. Yes, but you're utilising criteria in doing that. Yes. And so I'm saying you can utilise a criteria in trying to understand if another text is truthful or not, or another part of that text is truthful. So you're assuming, again, that if one part of this, whatever verse you're trying to show, or this chapter or something, is incorrect, that means the whole thing is incorrect. No, what it means... Is not no, no, no. What works. it means, well, what it does mean, yes. if you know someone's a liar, Liar, you're very careful about what they say because you don't know when they're lying to you. Yes. Because a liar is a liar. Yeah, of course. And if someone's lying yes. deliberately, they've got an agenda. So they're out to deceive you now. Of course. Right, right, right. Okay. So this was my whole premise, yes. yeah? If, if, mm -hmm. I, F, mm -hmm. if in the event of, yes. I can show you why I believe one of the gospel writers that you rely upon for a lot of what you believe is a liar, yeah? Which clean, which is intentional, yeah? Then my question to you is this, how can you still accept from this liar? That's my question. Now, you, what well, you've said, it doesn't matter if he's lied, it, it might be a mistake and the Holy Spirit allowed it. Do you understand? So that tells you, you can't be sure. Okay. That tells me then, that tells me, you can't, then you can't rely on what's being said because you don't know. What criterion do you, do you have to determine what else is a lie or mistake? No, 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 you can't interject. No, you can't interject. Carry on. He can't interject. Okay. So, you can't interject. God never lie. You can't interject. God you can't interject. Okay. Bible says so, God never lies. Lie. So Holy Spirit cannot lie. You can't okay. interject. You can't interject. Bible is clear. Have some manners. That God. Have some manners. Yeah. God, Have some manners. God never lies. Have some manners. Just hang on. Okay. Um, sorry. I agree. By the way. Carry on. Yeah. The thing is, what we're doing. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you for. Sorry, yeah. what we're doing here is we are conflating two issues. You're looking at a theological issue, inspiration by the Spirit, okay, and you're looking at a historical issue. You're saying this text. I'm looking at both. One second. Yeah, you're conflating it. And so I'm saying. I'm not conflating it. Can, can I say my point? Because I didn't let you finish. Well, stop making false points about me. Well, then you say it after I finish. Well, don't misquote me. No. If you misquote me, I'll stop you. Can you say it after I finish? No. Nope. I'll nice interrupt you. When you misquote me, I'll interrupt you. Okay. So don't misquote me. Did I misquote you? I said what we're doing here. I said we. No, you said what I'm doing. No, I said. 
we can replay this later. I said what we're doing is that we are conflating two different issues, theological, inspiration by the Spirit, and histo historical reliability of a text or a certain passage of something. Okay. And what you're doing here is you have to remember that even if you show something here that okay, this text seem it is seemingly unreliable, you cannot say that there is a probability of one certainty that it is unreliable. And thus God can have um, inspired it. And so what I'm trying to say to you. Sorry, 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 repeat that. If you're doing historical So I show you a text which is unreliable. When you're doing historical analysis, you utilize probabilities. Right. Okay. Agreed. Because, and the reason why is because more evidence could come Agreed. Later, Agreed. Which lowers or, or Agreed. raises the probability. Agreed. Okay. And so if you're looking at the text here and it seems to you, or it seems to us all, that the writer here is misleading, okay, in yep. what he's saying. Yeah. Okay, we can just say simply that at the moment now, it's quite, imp it's quite probable that he was misleading. But what you're trying to say here is that there is a certainty. There is. No, 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 no. That yes. wasn't what I was trying to say. Second, say, if you say my, let me say my point first. I didn't say that. Let me say my point, and you'll understand. Because only if you show that it is certain, there is a probability of one, then you can then bring that theological issue in here and say, well, definitely God can be no, inspired. No, no. Because I, the reason why is because later on, there could be texts that come out that allow us to understand that this wasn't misleading. All right, no. And so that's why I'm saying that you are saying definitely this is misleading. No. Okay. Oh, that's understand. not what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah, I think you misread this what I said. Okay, correct me. All right, all right. Answer. I asked you very yeah. simply uh, yes. about this inspiration by God. Yes. Whether or not eyewitness testimony or whether it's the Holy Spirit. Yes. You said eyewitness testimony, yes. right? So if a man is receiving a Holy Spirit, now, who's the Holy Spirit according to you? God, yes. the all-knowing. Yes. Doesn't make mistakes. Yes. Knows everything. Yes. Right. So if the Holy Spirit is the one guiding the hand of, or guiding the mind of the one who's doing the writing, and that writer makes a mistake, it should be corrected. Why? What? An error shouldn't be corrected. But why should it be corrected? Because it's a mistake. And but why should it be corrected? Because the, just because if, if the Holy Spirit is the one. Because the Holy Spirit is supposed to be inspiring the man writing to write the true and what, the truth of what happens. Okay, and then again, have you finished the point so I don't jump in? Okay, so you have to then say again, what is the mode of inspiration? No, 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 no. No, no, one second. No, 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 I implied that, I, I, I implied okay. that mode. Say, can I say my point? If there is a mode of inspiration that the writer is leading people, okay, to write these texts, but he's not, let's say, possessing their body or anything like that. And the author, you mean? One second, okay. Because if you realise in the way that God has providentially ordered the world, God has allowed a lot of mistakes in this world. Scientific errors, um, other errors that we can have. Are scientific errors God's mistake? Tonight has allowed, permitted. Yeah, but that's not God's word, is it? If God We're talking about God's word here, guidance for you. No, because you, you know, you're digressing. No, I'm not. You are, you are. I'll tell you no, why you are. I'll tell you why you are. Yes. I'll tell you why you are. Right? Okay, tell me. We're talking about God is deliberate. Look, what is the Gospels? The Gospels are the life an apparent death of Jesus of Nazareth. That's what they are. They're to tell the story. Yeah. Okay. The men who write the story in the Gospels are not eyewitnesses themselves. They're not eyewitnesses themselves. They receive this information from other eyewitnesses. No, John is the John is the eyewitness. Okay. They receive this Peter information. The they, they receive. There's no Gospel of Peter. They, they receive this uh, testimony from eyewitnesses. Just for example, when the women went to the tomb, none of the Gospel writers were there. Only the women were there. So John wasn't there. Peter wasn't there. Who, who was running okay. behind the women? No, 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 no. You're mistaken. You're mistaken. Peter, Peter you're, went. No, Peter you're mistaken. Went you're mistaken. Peter went there. You're mistaken. Sir, you're mistaken. Sir, you're mistaken. Sir, Peter, went there. Peter only went there when the women went to him and told him he's gone. Can you get to your point? Well, yeah, my point is very simple. Yeah. This eyewitness business. Okay, so for example, the the, the day after the, the re day after the crucifixion, yeah, the first day of the Sabbath. The day of when the tomb was empty. Okay. The only witnesses were the women. Only the women who went to the tomb. Yeah. yeah whether you read the Gospel of Mark and it was Mary Magdalene, Mary, mother of James, and Salome. Or whether it's uh, you read in Luke, uh, Mary, Mag Mary Magdalene, Mary, mother of James, and Johanna. If you read in the uh, Gospel of John, it's just Mary on her own. Okay. That's a different story. So the point here is this this idea that the Gospel women, writers. Like, women were at front, so but what, Peter was behind. Okay. But so the idea, they, they the idea, the idea that the gospel writers were there when they arrived at the tomb and seen the stone roll back, 
is a nonsense. Why? Because they weren't there. Because it was the women who were there. What? Initially? Yes. 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 So when they arrived at the tomb, only the women were there. So not one gospel writer was there, which tells me the Gospel of John was not written by an eyewitness. Okay. Because he can't tell that story. Women are telling right. Peter that he is risen. No. Yeah. The women. He is risen. The women we, run to just, find the disciples. Yeah, but let's just have a conversation after. Well, don't worry. Don't worry. The, the resurrection is coming full okay. glory every single gospel. Don't worry about that. Yes. This is just a precursor. This is the you know the appetizer. Yeah. This is what we're all going to talk about. This is the menu. What we're going to have for the main course. Excellent. Excellent. Don't worry. Okay, so you're going to know what you're going to know who went to the tomb, what happened at the tomb, who went to the tomb after, who didn't, what this gospel writer said. What this you're going to know it all, mate. Don't worry about that. What happened before the resurrection? You're going to know about also. Anyway, so this is just the, like I said, this is the menu now. We're just to determine which what we're going to have before the fish. We don't know yet. All right. So as it stands right now, going back to this uh, idea of uh, in inspiration by God, we know that the gospel writers were not there. We know that. We know that their source of information was other people. We know that. This is not hearsay. This is not a hairy fairy belief. This is not subjective. This is objective. How do you know this? How do we know that? From what's read? What we read? No, but what, what all of the Gospels wrote, the people that wrote it weren't there. No, we know when Jesus that what was, was written the in the Gospels, yeah, sir, sir, the people... When, when Jesus was on the cross, no, when Jesus was on the cross, Jesus said to John, here is my mother, look after her, take care of her. Therefore, therefore, they were all right, they were please, all please, there. Please, please, they were you, all there. You can have your say later. Yeah, they were, they were all I, there. I promise, I promise, I promise for the camera well. and for my fellow here, yeah? yeah. You're next. Excellent, excellent. I will, Dan, I will. And I will. Went to the no problem. Yeah. All right. Sorry, yeah. So the principle here is this. This is what I was just trying to establish. Because if you say to me, listen, if you say to me, it doesn't matter that a gospel writer lied, it doesn't matter if the Holy Spirit allows mistakes, there's no need to continue. Yeah. Because what's the point of me proving it? You accept it anyway. You don't have a problem with it. Do you understand? It means you go away now knowing that your Gospels could have mistakes and your Gospels could contain lies. But I like the sound of it. That's basically what you're doing. Okay. So again, and you'll give me time to speak, so I did give, give you time. Just don't misquote okay. me. So again, you're remember when you are doing an analysis which you're trying to do here to show that this text is faulty okay it's unreliable you are doing a historical analysis yes. you utilize probability yes. yes what's probability probability you want to go through probability theory what do you think probability is sorry what's probability, probability more likely theory. more likely yeah? well, you're looking for proposition renders or confirms another proposition exactly okay so it raises the probability yeah i agree you have a hypothesis so you're saying there's a hypothesis here Okay, my tech, my hypothesis, this specific verse or this specific passage or this specific book is unreliable. And then you'll have to bring me propositional evidence to show or to raise your the probability of your hypothesis to be probable or more right. probably more probable. And you have to not. refute it. Okay. So like I've said again, you are bringing one verse or you're bringing one thing and you're saying here, this proves... One verse? One second. This I think you underestimate me. One verse? You're cutting Carry on. Sorry. Please do. I mean, if we're going to have a conversation, <laughs> Continue. can we do it? Well, yeah, thank you. So, when you're doing historical study, Alison, please, you don't just bring, okay, a verse here, and that can then prove, okay, that, um, let's say, this book is unreliable. You need to have a myriad of evidence which raises the probability of something, okay, to be prob more probable than not, to prove or to render your hypothesis as okay, probable. Okay, okay. And so, you counterbalance that by the things which are reliable. So if there are quite reliable things here that we have in the book of Matthew or in the book of Luke or whatever, your hypothesis might be improbable. So you can't just bring one verse and say, well, this shows that the gospel writer here is uh, is unreliable. This gospel is unreliable. No, your hypothesis has not been rendered probable. That's why I said it. So, exactly. So, I haven't done the, I present my evidence second, yet, mate. One second. So then we need to look through the whole of Matthew. No, we don't. Yes, we do. Why? Because 
please. If you like, you do know probability, like you were just saying. Okay? Why do you have to know for all yes. of Matthew? Because when you're trying to render a hypothesis as probable, you need a myriad of evidence against. So, and so what you're second, saying is one second right. for and against. So what you're saying. And so if there are reliable verses here, right? Okay, and there are unreliable verses here, you then need to see that if these, the totality of evidence here renders your hypothesis right, as right. probable. So, so, and so I'm saying my my thinking on this yeah. is that you are simply saying that okay, look, I can point here, point here, point here, point here, and say okay, now this book is unreliable. No, no, no. When I'm saying actually no, let's look through the whole of Matthew. Let's utilize the okay, criteria. Okay. So, so using I'll, your standard. I'll finish first. Let's look through the criteria of authenticity. Okay, okay. Utilize that. Apply right. it. Look through the whole of Matthew, and then we can then say if your hypothesis has been rendered probable. All right. Okay. okay. So if you have hours here, we can do that. I'm happy, and we can look through Matthew and okay. utilize that. Criteria. Are you saying to so that's what you're yes. saying to me now. You're saying to me, if I prove a man has lied, watch, watch the camera, yeah? If I prove to you a man has lied, I have to show you every time that else he's lied, or can I show you once he's lied? So, you're trying to show... Now, if I show you a man's a liar, second. if I show you a man's one a liar, second. if I show you a man is a liar, yeah? Okay, does it matter if you might have told the truth about something else? Of course it does. Really, why? Of course it does. Why? Because when you're trying to say... Let's say, use a more applicable example, okay? If someone has written so many words, okay, let's say they have 10 words or something, right. okay, and one of them is fallacious, okay, that doesn't mean that all of the other information that is written must be fallacious. No, it's questionable. Yes, it's questionable, but you haven't So it's not reliable. It. One second. No, you're not understanding. You're, you, you're not utilizing probability theory because that's what history does. So all you're doing here is just saying, I can show you here. No, that I didn't say that. Unbelievable. I said, no, if I show you. Your whole point in this conversation is trying to say that Matthew or whatever book is unreliable. Of course the book, it is. Of course it is. The book, not a verse. No, I'm so no, 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 no. I'm set, my whole purpose yes. here is to say to you that the author of the Gospel of Matthew, because I don't believe it's Matthew the disciple, that's a okay, nonsense. Whoever. Okay. Um, the author author of the Gospel of Matthew mm -hmm. is a liar. That's, what, that's my whole premise here. That's my whole claim. It's your hypothesis. A claim? Or hypothesis. Okay. What's a hypothesis? A hypothesis is a proposition that you're trying to, um, you're postulating to explain some phenomena or data. And what's a claim? Okay. A claim is, is an assertion. That's okay. what I'm doing. But you're, no, but you're giving a hypothesis. You're trying to explain the data. No, I'm asserting it. It's a claim. You you are you have a hypothesis here. You're trying to test it. Okay, I believe this book is unreliable. Okay, now you need to look at the evidence to see if the evidence supports your hypothesis. I don't know the difference between that and a claim is, but anyway, a claim is an, is an assertion. Okay, an I assertion am asserting does, it. It's an assertion that does not have to be based on evidential propositions. Of course it does. Okay, a hypothesis, if it is to be true, has to be based on evidential. No, no, so what? A claim doesn't have to be based on what? It does not have to be. I can claim. Claim now that my shoes are green. But you'd have to support it, isn't it? No, I don't, because it's a claim, it's an assertion. What? A hypothesis, a claim can be false, yes? Yes. Okay, so... If How would I, I know it's false? It can be false, Yes. Okay? Can a hypothesis be false? I can... Of course it can. So what's the difference? There's the shoes claim. Why is that an hypothesis? Because that's how history works. Well, I'm making a claim. Okay, go with what you said. Thank you. Okay. Yes. So, so my claim is, the author of the Gospel of Matthew yes. is a liar. Mm -hmm. And that makes his... what he wrote an unreliable source of information. What you're saying is, even if he is a liar, it doesn't make what he writes unreliable. Now, logically, I'm trying to understand that, because we know a man who lies, he may lie again, right? So how can you trust what he says if he's already, if he's already been known to be lies? So the word you used was may. May is talking about possibility. But the whole started with if, remember? Possibility. He said he may lie again, OK? So may, you're talking about possibility. It is logically possible that this person can lie again. Right. And I have no issue with that. Right. But is it probable that he is a liar? Because what you have to if show... he's already lied. What you have to yeah, show... Yeah, he's a liar. Do you understand what logical possibility is? Do you understand what that is? Look, I understand one thing. Do you understand? I understand one thing. If I know a man is a liar, I wouldn't stake my salvation on what that geezer says, personally. Exactly. So, I am saying to you here, make distinctions. Understand the language you are utilising, okay? 
it is logically possible that this person could be a liar. Right. But I will come to you and say, actually, it is improbable that he is a liar. We haven't seen the evidence. Yes. yes. So, unless we have time now to go through the book. We have, we have time. That's what we're here for. So, oh. do you want to go through, bring up your evidence and then show me? Yeah, we're going to. Okay, but, but first. Let's go. Let's go. Let's no, go. no, no. But just, just, just. No, like, what like, so let's go. Like, like I explained to you yeah. earlier, if I do present my evidence mm -hmm. and you do concede he did lie, then what? What do you mean? Then what? What do you want? Right, that's my point. So, yeah, I mean, well, so if, if I do present yes. my case and I do produce the evidence and it does seem yeah. more probable that he did lie, mm -hmm. will you still rely on the other things he writes? Could I still, could I still, will, will, will I or could I? Would you? Okay, would I? Um, if it is, if he is shown, okay, to be a liar, I think it's difficult for someone to hold to the reliability. Alhamdulillah, that's okay. what I want to hear. If they're shown. But, that's I believe, honesty. One second. Yeah. I believe that um, the probability will be quite high that that's he's fine. still alive. That's that, fine. Sorry, that that's he's fine. still alive. Right. Okay. That's the first thing. Okay. Second thing, if he is shown that the author of the Gospel of Matthew is a liar, could that liar have been inspired by the Holy Spirit to tell that lie? Okay, that's two. Can we go to the first? No, 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 do both. I want them both, both first. Do both at the same time. Because the whole point is this. If he's a liar, then both will apply. Okay, so it's just what you believe. So, for example, if you just believe this guy is a man who, just relax, is being inspired by, or is being told by his um, compatri con uh, contemporaries of what happened at the time because he wasn't there, and he wrote down that, and the Holy Spirit guided him in what to write, this is one thing. If you're claiming that the Holy Spirit is actually uh, making sure what he writes is true, this is another thing. Right. So if he's a liar, two problems. Can't be the Holy Spirit guiding him because the Holy Spirit is not a liar. Unless you believe the Holy Spirit can lie. Uh, second thing is, why would you lie on the information of a book written by a liar? So that's the, pre that's the whole premise. Now if you turn around to me and say, well, even if there's a lie there, the Holy Spirit might have allowed it for whatever particular reason. That means you're, happy, you're, you're content with that. You can take that. You can accept the idea the Holy Spirit can lie to support an agenda. Yeah? You, you, you concede that point. So the Holy Spirit could lie to Paul when he speaks to Paul, for example. We know now the Holy Spirit's a liar. Forget the Lord of Matthew being a liar. The Holy Spirit's a liar. No, no, God isn't. God this is what, this is what, this is where it's going. All right. No, 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 take God is a liar. No, I mean in terms of what? No. I'm proving the author of the Gospel of Matthew yeah, yeah, is a liar. Okay, can we? Which would rule out, and if, if the author of the Gospel of Matthew is a liar, that means that the Holy Spirit cannot be guiding him unless you accept the Holy Spirit's a liar. And then that's got massive ramification. Before so now you have to remove this idea that Matthew is inspired by God if indeed he lied. That's my whole uh, yes. before, hypothesis. Before he answers, like that word. let me make a comment. Let me make a comment. This gospel was uh, printed and uh, distributed in the uh, 4th century. In 4th century. But the uh, Quran is coming in 7th okay. century. Uh, sorry, Quran is we have to stop you. Uh, we have to stop you. Nope. Sorry, 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 sorry. Quran is coming this whole in 7th century. Oh. And Quran, Quran, Listen, Quran, says, uh, Quran says the gospel, gospel, the people of the book can go back to gospel to be judged. If if it is a uh, uh, lie and if it is uh, uh, wrong, then why did Muhammad uh, said go back to gospel Finished. And, and be judged, be judged there? If you remember the whole premise, you can't mention Islam or the Quran to hide behind. I know, I know, but we're trying to just focus on one thing. He, he, okay. No, the whole premise, the whole premise, but, but the, their own prophet, their own prophet says it's not lie, it's, not, it's truth. Okay. Gospel is truth, Zabur is truth, Uncle, can I say something to you? Uh, let me say something to you. Truth. Uh, and even Quran says let me, let me say there is a you. guidance. I'm going to say something to you. Yeah. The whole start of this conversation, yeah. he's not allowed to use the Quran or Islam. Mm. He's got to on its own merits. No, if, yes, can't hide behind Islam. I'm an agnostic. No, no, no. Can't hide behind. Can't, 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 you can't ask hide, so many can't questions. Hide it. Let us ask questions. Listen, we agree, no, we agreed. Allow, no. allow us no. to ask questions. No, we agreed. Allow us to we ask questions. Listen, listen, listen. We agreed. Can, no you, Quran. You can ask no as many as okay. questions no. you want. No. But let me ask questions as well. Then I'm going to stand here 
have to stand here now. Have some respect. 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 Have some
That's the prophecy. Okay. So not, right. not, Jesus changed it said in the earth. So it changed to say the belly of the fish. So you said the belly of the fish. Jesus Christ will be in the belly of the fish. Belly right? of the earth. Belly of the earth. Okay. Let me read it. So um, this is King James, isn't it? <laughs> King James. Oh God. Anyone got an NIV? No, this is better. No. Look like, silly. Like you you, yeah, yeah, of course you like this. Got, contains all the fabrications that support you. Of course you like this. Maybe next week. Say it again. You can change version against you. Ah. Okay, first Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the son of man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will rise up in the judgment with this generation and condemn it, because they are repenting at the preaching of Jonah, and indeed a greater than Jonah is here. And then it speaks about Queen of Sheba. Yeah. All right. So basically, the miracle that Jesus will do to prove that he is who he claims to be to the Pharisees is that he will be inside the belly of the earth for three days and three nights. Okay. Now, according to the biblical uh, prophecies in Deuteronomy, I think it's 13, where it speaks about a prophet who will speak of something that doesn't come to pass, he is a false prophet. So, for me, the claim is this. Jesus didn't spend three days and three nights in the belly of the earth. So either it's a false prophecy and he's a false prophet according to the criteria set by the Bible, or Matthew lied. Okay. All right, let's can you think of the Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 18 and 19? 20. It's got nothing we'll, to do with we'll, what we're we'll talking about. That. We'll read that also. It's got nothing to do with what yeah, we're talking we'll, about. We'll read that verse also. It's got nothing to do with what we're talking about. It is talking about the false prophet. You you are asking about the false prophet. No. And the I don't believe Jesus was a, I don't believe Jesus was a false prophet. Clari clari I don't believe it, no, I don't believe Jesus is no, a false no, prophet. Uh, the uh, false prophet is given in verse 20 here. Mm. A word he shall that, will, that will tell who is a uh, false prophet here. Mm. That will give the uh, false prophet the definition of false prophet here. Verse 20. What does it say? It says, But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, yeah. who speaks in the name of an other gods, uh -huh. that prophet shall die. Yes. No, read Jeremy 30. Yeah. Jeremy 30. I think it is. Well, you're, that's what you're bringing. No, you told me 30. 30. So, see, because basically that was. So the satanic verses. Okay. God, uh -huh. God well, have not given. Sorry, sorry, let's look at God have ne not given, but the Satan has given to Muhammad. Yeah, exactly. Can we get satanic to verses? So, so, so he. No, no. Was, just, so, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have. So, sorry, sorry, guys. It's okay. It's okay. I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to stand here, bro. Because you're wrecking the conversation. We're having a decent conversation okay. here. I'm, You've got an agenda. Gracious, you can no, speak I, about I another time. Any oh, agenda. Oh, we're we're having a discussion. Okay. We're having a discussion. You are putting. No. You are putting blame on Jesus. That uh, he is a he is a false uh, no, no, prophet. No, no, no. I'm not proving that. I'm not. I'm not doing that. Whereas, whereas, I'm not doing that. Whereas, I'm saying Jesus did. never said those words. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Who's it? Jesus, I'm saying that. Right. What I'm saying is we're, we're having a discussion. Listen, we're having a discussion. Right? We have agreed this discussion. Conditions of the discussion. Yeah. Because we're talking about the Bible. Don't mention the Quran. Don't because that was the conditions. Our conditions, not your conditions. You weren't invited to this discussion. Yeah. You're so rudely interrupting the discussion, as Christians usually do when they see their Christians under pressure. But listen, but listen, because we're having... Why can't we speak about... Uh, because we're having a discussion here about the Bible, not the Qur'an. So, so no need to talk about the Qur'an. Anyway, and we're talking about the author of the Gospels. We're not talking about anything other than that. Okay? So we're staying on point. You're trying to go here, there and everywhere. Why, why are you burning now when I give you the... Uh, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because you're, so you you're so ignorant. You are burning now. Right. Burning now because uh, I give you the... Sure. Yeah, let's just finish this. And then okay. Okay. Carry on. Carry on. Carry on. We'll do that. Sorry for that. Yeah. Carry on. Sorry. <laughs> let's go again. Um, okay. So. What, what was your main claim? It was. I'm claiming yes. that either that was that prophecy fulfilled or not. That's the first point. Okay. Do you believe well, that Jesus was? Will be in the belly of the earth for three days and three nights. Um, yeah, I think it was. Yeah. Really? Can you yes. explain that? Okay. So um, it depends how you you understand the cultural context of the Judaic people. How do you understand that? Okay. So for them, the day normally started in the evening. Same as the Muslims, we know. Okay. And so if you're counting from the day. Thursday evening, the day's already started. So what? Thursday evening, okay, the day... Friday, Friday evening. Oh, one second. Thursday evening... Why Thursday? Can I speak, please? 
Okay. Thursday evening, the day would have already started and gone on to the next day. No. Yes. Thursday evening. What's Thursday evening got to do anything? Thursday evening to Friday evening. Yes. It's so one day. So, if you're counting in that way. When's the Sabbath? Huh? Can I, can I no, 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 because you're completely wrong. I'll tell you why you're completely Friday wrong. I'll tell you why you're completely wrong. Yes, oh, it's the Sabbath. Going to, yeah. All right, you explain it all. All right. Go on. Second. And then I'll completely refute it. Go on. Why Thursday so, evening, carry on. You're so aggressive. I don't understand that. Have a nice. I was nice until this geezer started yeah, chirping. I mean, I'm not that geezer. I'm speaking to you and I'm trying to explain something to you. Okay, thank you. So, if you're under Understanding the cultural context of the Judeo Same as the Muslims, continue. We know the cultural oh, concepts. We're not talking about Islam. Same lunar calendar. We... Are we bringing Islam in or not? No. Okay, so why are you bringing it in? No, because you, you asked me a question about, about do I understand Hebrew, Judaic I'm I'm saying, timings? Yes, I do. I said if you. Yeah, I do. I'm not presupposing that. I do, I do. Okay, good. So let's not bring in Islam then, like you said. Okay, so. <laughs> As the day started, okay, Thursday evening, that's how the day would have started in that Judaic calendar, how they understood the day. And so it's possible for the day to run, not in the way that we would have said it, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, because Jesus would have resurrected on Sunday. But so if the if we understand the cultural context, we can say that the day would have started the prior day, Thursday evening, and then gone on to Friday evening, and then Friday evening, Saturday evening, Saturday evening Sunday evening, and that would have still been three days. Okay? So your claim Thank you, that's okay. Yeah. Yes. Talking absolute nonsense. Why am I talking nonsense? What's Thursday evening got to do? <laughs> Why am I talking nonsense? Oh, okay. What's Thursday evening? According to Jewish tradition. So Thursday. What's Thursday evening? What's Thursday evening? Thursday evening is what? In the way I'm speaking, yeah. the context is what? would have been the start. Show an example. No. Thursday evening would be Friday. All right, so it wouldn't be Thursday anymore. He's trying to demonstrate an example of how... No, but it's completely false. What's Thursday got to do? Look, when was Jesus put on the cross? Pre preparation day. When is preparation day? Before the Sabbath. When is Saturday? Sabbath? Saturday. When was Jesus put on the cross? Three hours before the sunset. On the Sabbath, on the Friday. What's Thursday evening got to do with anything? He wasn't in the belly of the earth until when? So, Sunday morning. When was he in the belly of the earth? Sunday morning. He came down off the cross after sunset because the earth went dark. Yeah, so we know it was Maghrib time. Now, here's the easiest way to understand it and why I brought, so not bringing Islam into it, but this idea of Hebrew understanding. So what's imagine, your imagine. What's your point? That the, the day begins when? You are correct. The evening. Not the evening, Maghrib. Maghrib time is when the sun sets, okay? No, no, no. Okay, no. okay. This is when the day begins for the Arabs and the Muslims, following the lunar calendar, okay? So that's the beginning of our day. So when we fast in the month of Ramadan, and we say that um, the moon was sighted at Maghrib time on the Friday, we will pray Tarawih, yeah? The prayer in the masjid, Friday night. And then we would fast Saturday, yeah? Because the, 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 the night has started, which is starts with the Maghrib. That, it's, it's in reverse, you're correct. Okay. So if Jesus was taken down on preparation day, yeah? Just before sunset, or just after sunset, yeah? Friday's gone now, we're on the Sabbath now, yeah? So Sabbath has begun. Now, so as far as we're Muslims are concerned, and he was buried then, yeah? That's, so if we were praying our Tarawi, between the time Jesus was put in the earth and the time Jesus was resurrected, according to what the scriptures say, we would have prayed two Tarawis and fasted one day. Right? So, just to stop you, why are you speak? I, I, I don't yeah. really care about this. No, 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 one second. Islam one second. That, no, no, I'll explain why. I'll explain why. I'm giving you the time scales. Because, look, because we pray the night prayer in when the Ramadan starts, yeah? Now, I'm using the way that the Sabbath begins on a Friday. I'm using that as a day as like Ramadan starts. Midnight. So we, we know midnight the timings. Yeah, right. It's sunset to sunset. Okay. So when the sunset starts Saturday. So if Jesus is put in the belly of the earth after Maghrib, after sunset on the Friday, which is now the Sabbath, that's the Sabbath. Now, the Sabbath lasts from the Sabbath on the... Uh, from the Maghrib on the Friday to the Maghrib on the Saturday. If you speak to any Jew, they will fast from sunset Friday, sorry, they will sorry, abstain from work and all that business and keep the Sabbath from sunset Friday to sunset Saturday. Once they achieve sunset Saturday, that's the day finished, okay? So this is Jewish using your terminology. So for a Jew, the Sabbath began at um, sunset on the Friday, which had become Saturday, obviously, because that's the f beginning of the day. And it ended at sunset on the Saturday, which is one day, which is what? Two nights, one day. Not three days and three nights. 
Why? using this Jewish, Jewish terminology. Why is... Now, why did you mention Thursday? I have no clue. Can I speak, please? Yes. It's going to help Sid. So he's trying to emphasize this. This is what the Jewish... I know what the Jewish like. thing is. Ah, so, so this is what he was, uh -huh. was trying to bring it out. But why does Thursday have to do with anything? He was trying to say, for, for, look, for instance, he says here, I, I, Thursday Jesus starts at sun, the, sundown the on Wednesday night. Let's just see. And Thursday uh, ends on sun, sun. When does Friday down. start? So Friday. When does Preparation Day start? Friday starts at sundown on Thursday. Yes, I know yeah. that. Yeah. And Friday ends at sundown. Saturday, the, which I just said. Mm. Sunday starts at sundown on Friday. That's what I just said. And a day uh, ends at sundown. That's yeah. what I just said. So well, if you see here, there's four, there's three days. There's when three was days Jesus, sorry, when was Jesus put in the belly of the earth? Which day? Oh, Richard's here. How are you doing, Richard? We're cracking open the Gospel of Matthew if you care to uh, help Josh. Just listening. <laughs> <laughs> Can you help answer this conundrum Sorry, with regards? I don't know much about this. I'm going to leave it to you. Right. <laughs> they don't really know much about it either. Is that, is that really? Why? But you just Googled the answer, I've seen you. I just Googled, I, I Googled the Googled. answer, not him. I oh, yeah, I just oh, sorry. Did you show him the answer? No, we already know the answer. This is from Why should we Google What are you, what are you looking at? Of course, the Bible. Scripture. Is it? Okay. Yes. So, it's, it's so where did you get Thursday evening from? So, firstly, if we're going to dialogue, you not be having all these ad hominems and all this sort of thing. Just ad hominems? Yes, ad hominem. You know what that is. I'm not attacking your character yes. to make my Sorry, argument listen, stronger. Listen. I'm all not attacking you, I'm attacking your argument. All the time, okay, we can't ever have a peaceful conversation. Because you're jumping in all the time and saying you sort of You just thing. said I didn't so have a comment in on you. Listen. Don't make so listen. accusations. Listen. I'm trying to emphasize. Can we have a conversation? We, we can. Without you having an aggressive character that you're coming uh, uh, I'll try it. Okay, try it. Okay, please. I'll try. Thank you. So, when you were doing exegesis, why were you bringing in the Islamic understanding? No, no, I was using. No, no, no. I was using. Can I finish? Okay. okay. So, if did, you're doing did you ask a question? If you're doing exegesis of a text, yeah. okay, yeah. I don't know why you'll bring that text to try and understand the Judaic mindset and oh, practice. Oh, okay. And so, if you can bring the evidence of what you are saying from Judaic texts, yeah. I will hold to There's a Jew here. Where's the Jew? Do me a favor. Someone find that Jewish geezer with the, so, the, the kippah or whatever. No, no, no. So, no, we'll just clarify at this point. Can we, so you obviously know this, like you're saying. So, yeah, of course we know this. Yes, so you brought the analogy of Islam, let's leave that, and just show me evidence from the Judaic text that supports what you were saying, please. You're going to Google this as well, is that a problem? I don't mind. Okay, so then why do you attack Google? Google? I'll tell you what, you I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the difference, you see. Okay. What, what I said to Richard, yeah. you don't understand this three days, three nights business. I, I okay, this is one thing. Good. And you, I thought you were Googling it. Okay. All right. You just asked me a specific okay. thing about Jewish uh, timekeeping yeah, that you want me to show you. So let's do it then. I can't show you my brain, can I? Okay. Explain it to me then, if you know. All right, well, don't okay. add hominid attacks on me. Sorry, then. I won't say show. Explain. All right, well, don't add hominid attacks on me then. Can you explain? Can I explain it? Yeah, I can explain it. Yeah, okay. Okay, with evidence. Tell me the. All right, I'll make the writers, it okay. So I know. okay. Okay. What? The writers of the text that you're going to quote from, so please tell yeah. me that supports your yeah. supports your. Um, yeah. hypothesis. What you want me to give you the writers of the text of the Jewish uh, time they start their Sabbath? So really? So I can go back yeah. and check what you were saying. Can you remember what I tell you? I can go back and check. ask any Jew. Go to Stanford Hill. Ask any Jew. They'll tell you. Ask him. Why should he go to Jew? Know. Number one. He's talking to I, you. <laughs> Number one, if we're looking at... Just give me that Jewish guy, please. Uh, get me any Jew, any Jew. Okay, so explain... We'll just verify this, but it's a bad. Don't worry about you. Okay. you we know show? our Bible. One second. We yeah. know our One second. Right. So, we're doing exegesis of this passage. We're trying to understand the Judaic worldview that that writer was No, what writing. we're doing... What One second, yeah. let me finish. The Judaic worldview that the person was writing. So, you were trying to clarify something and say that actually what I said was incorrect, so please... Provide the evidence of why that's... Oh, okay. okay. No, I asked the question... No, provide the evidence. No, I asked I the question, why did you mention Thursday? No, provide the evidence because you brought to me an analogy with Islam, but we're not talking about Islam. No, why did I bring it? No, no, no. One second. No, no, there was we're no analogy talk... with Islam. Yes. The analogy was this. Yeah, it was nothing to do with... Ex... Not. Okay. Uh, Arab understanding of time okay, but I don't want of... Ar Arabic It's the same as the I Jews. Want, I want Judaic It's the same. No, so no, I don't no, need that. Not. Just show it's me not. Judaic it's All right, I gotta tell you. you a, it. All right, all right. Here's my claim. Here's my claim for the camera. Yes, 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 Josh can't get it, so we'll give. We'll try. Okay. Fine. Okay. The Jewish Islamic Sabbath, when the Jews put down their tools, <laughs> where the Jewish businesses close early, so by sunset they're all at home and they don't have to do any work. All you Jews in Stamford Hill, please comment on the video just to confirm this. Is Friday at sunset. Okay. Right. Jesus was put on the cross on preparation day. 
Because I have to make this point clear. No, you don't need to shout. Right. He does. He does. I, I, I don't know because no, he's just, not going just in. Speak normally. All right. Don't be rude as well. Jesus. Rude. Jesus. Jesus, rude. Jesus was put on the cross according to on your Thursday. scriptures on preparation day. Preparation day begins at sunset on Thursday. Yeah. But sunset on Thursday is now Friday. Preparation day. Thursday evening's got nothing to do with anything. If Jesus was put on the cross after sunset on preparation day, this is now the Sabbath. Friday's gone now. Now we're on Saturday, the Sabbath. Okay. If Jesus was put in the tomb after sunset on Friday, that's Saturday. One night. That's all day up until um, sunset on Saturday, which becomes Sunday then. Yeah? So that's one day. And then from sunset on Saturday till sunset on Sunday is another day. But Jesus, according to the Gospels, was gone before sunrise. Yeah? So you didn't even, so using my Muslim analogy, and I have to use it because just to, so Muslims can understand this. Remember one thing, Josh. Remember one thing, Josh, yeah? What I'm doing here now is not to persuade you of anything. Right? Trust that. All right? If you do, alhamdulillah. But what I'm trying to do is, is, is expose something. All right? Now, my Muslim brethren are watching around the world, yeah? They will understand this and they'll be able to relay it when they speak to Christians making the same claim. So I'm using the Muslim analogy for that reason. Nothing to prove anything to you. Nothing to try and bring Islam to the fore. No. It's just to show you that if we Muslims began our fast, at the, uh, sorry, if Ramadan started at the same time as the Sabbath, yeah, which is Maghrib, because when we fast in the month of Ramadan, we wait until sunset on a particular day. If we, if, sorry, and when the sun sets, we see is the moon, new moon sighted or not. If the new moon is sighted or not, that's when Ramadan starts. That's when we do our first night of night prayer, because we do a night prayer every day of Ramadan. So that would be the first night of Ramadan. Then before sunrise the next day, we would, we would uh, eat and then from sunrise until sunset, we would fast, yeah? Because by sunset, it's another day now. So we would do, we would do one night prayer, one day fast, one night prayer, and then we wouldn't even start the fast because it's before sunrise. Okay, which is? Hold on, Hold on, So this is, so this is. The day you see the moon, you don't count it in Ramadan. You don't count. You count the next day. All right. In in Ramadan, not the. We pray. We pray in the mosque. We pray in the mosque the night we see the moon. You don't count. Are you telling me what we do? Yeah. You're telling me you what us Muslims do? You don't count that day. Are you Muslim? Yeah. Oh. You don't. Him? Yeah. He's, I, I, he's, I, I don't know what he is. He's telling you yeah. what he is. So you, you don't, later you on, don't count that day. Anyway, anyway, anyway. So the principle here is this. We have two nights, two nights and one day. The reason why I said no, 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 he was, no, no, was, was ridiculous, yeah. Thursday Not has nothing to do with the equation. Thursday's already gone. If preparation day started, Thursday's finished. Nothing to do with anything. And if he's buried after the sunset on the Sabbath yeah. on the day before the preparation day and that's the Sabbath now yeah, yeah? which is Friday's gone now so and remember what the prophecy is not dead three days three nights inside the earth so it's when he's put in the tomb is when the timing begins yeah so sorry I'm shouting again so so we know that if he went in the tomb two nights one day using Jewish chronology if you want to do it the other way we'll do English way yeah Friday night Saturday oh Oops. Saturday night, two nights, one day. It doesn't change. Okay, so Jesus made a prophecy to the Pharisees, and he said this is the only sign he's going to give them that he'll be inside the earth for three days and three nights, and he wasn't. So either it's a false prophecy, and according to the Bible, he's a false prophet because his prophecy didn't come true, or Matthew lied. So can I, can I sorry, th thanks for your point, I think it was, good. It was a strong point. Um, but where it says about the day of preparation, can we look at that verse? Yes. Do you know what the day of preparation, so day of preparation is? What, preparation for Friday. Friday. Yeah. Okay. Can, we, can we look at that verse? If you like. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's some Triffid here. What's up? Who is this channel anyway? Oh, not those boys. I'm asking, you're claiming to believe in a book. I'm saying 
Two nights and one day, isn't it? I'm sorry. That's it. No, which way you want to twist it? Three days, it doesn't three change. Days. Doesn't have English way, lunar calendar way, doesn't change a thing. Even if you want to say part of a while, day equals a day. While they are, while they are looking code, for, can I ask you a question here? Huh? If question goes can I ask you a question? Post, a theological quote, the judge will throw it because it's contradictory. Can I ask you a question, please? No. He's running away. Yes. He's oh, running. I'm running. I'm running for oh, the hills, mate. Running, running. I'm holding you. <laughs> I don't debate the mat. Yeah. I, don't, I don't debate the mat. What? I don't debate you, the mat. Why are you scared? Let me ask a question. No. You are asking a hundred and millions question to a gentleman. I'm asking one question. And I'm asking, I'm asking just one question. No. Because it'll be a stupid question. No? It will be. It will be. It'll be something so, I'm answering Islam. So Surah, Surah 33 verse 37 is a stupid question? I would say so. so if you're asking uh, about it, probably yes. Okay. Okay. So so your Quran, I'm asking about your Quran. So that's a stupid... You, you're so if you're asking yeah, the question, yeah, most definitely. Uh, ignore it. So Surah, it. Surah 33 and verse 37 is a stupid verse uh, he is saying. Probably if you he know. He is saying. Let's not be he is saying. Let's not be okay. so, I did say, listen, I did say the Christians can't do this without mentioning the Quran. I did say this at the beginning. To be fair, he has. Yeah, but not me. I have, I have no, I know you have. Muslim, Muslim don't have answer for this question. I just think we should not answer you. Because you don't have answer. I'm just trying to understand the preparation. Yeah, yeah, no, I understand the preparation day. And even when preparation day is Friday, started on Thursday evening. I don't see the point in it. I don't see the relevance. But fish for it. <laughs> But, but Friday start from Thursday, Thursday midnight. Thursday, I'm not familiar with the yeah. Yeah. Thursday midnight onward. It's a heavy argument. Yeah. Yeah. It's a heavy argument. Yeah. And this is just the um, this is just you know the sauce you, sauce you get with the burger with the, with the with the steak. Because this is just the first challenge. There's three more or two more. Two more. Well, that one I'll come back to with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And you have to come. Yeah. I'm not back here next week. Uh, but week after, I'll be there as well. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know when I'm back. I come once a month. But this, uh, this is a madhouse for me. I can't handle it. I can't handle it. Every I've seen week. you on um, YouTube. <laughs> yeah, but I'm only here once a month. Really? But we do about four videos in the day, and then we spread them out. Because what is? We don't like to just splurge the videos out for the views. We like to put a video out there. We like the comment section. We like yeah. come back and forth, learn something. It's like I always say, yeah, I win or I learn in the park. So someone might put a comment. On the, in the comment section that says, actually, Hamza, you're wrong about this, that, the other. And I'll look into it. Was I wrong about it? And if I was wrong about it, you'll never hear me repeat it. Yeah. Stand. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I was just understanding the preparation. And, yeah, it's got nothing to do with anything. No, I'm seeing you correcting me. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, so thank you. Um, so, are you saying, just understand your argument, the counting of it, was it two days that he was in the ground and... No. Okay, so I'm um, saying, according to, if you want to use Jewish terminology, Jewish, yes. no, it was one day in the ground, two evenings, two nights. So one day in the ground, so... Two nights. Okay, so Friday, so if, like I was saying, if the day started on Thursday, okay, and then Thursday sundown, sorry, sundown... No, 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 Thursday's irrelevant, again, it's irrelevant. No, speak... But stop bringing this irrelevant Thursday into it, it's got nothing to do with it. Can I speak this possible? Yes. So, if the day started, okay, so we go from Thursday to Friday, Friday to Saturday, Saturday to Sunday. Yes. Okay, so day one... Is when? Okay, when would that have started? Saturday. Day one would have started on Saturday? Yeah. Why, sir? Because night one was Friday night, Saturday night. Sorry? Because night one... Mm -hmm. Look, you wanted to use the German Jewish yeah, terminology. All right. Yes, yeah. A day mm -hmm. in Jewish terminology mm -hmm. and Arab terminology yes. is this. It starts at sunset. Mm -hmm. So the night precedes the day. Not the day precedes the night. So when the day starts um, for the Jews, it's night time. Yeah? And then the day comes, and when the day ends, a night begins, that starts the beginning of the next day. Okay. So if you're put in the ground yeah. on Sabbath, yeah. the beginning of the Sabbath, mm -hmm. that's night time according to Jewish terminology. So that's one night. Mm -hmm. Then yeah. night then becomes day, sun rises. So from sunrise then till sunset, that's the day. When the sun sets, it starts the new day. But it's night time. Do you understand? So that's the Jewish way. If you do it the other way, the English way, he was put in the uh, ground Friday night. He was in the two 
to him Saturday and Saturday night and Sunday he was gone okay which is same you want to do it that way you want to do it that way it still only works out at two nights one day okay. but then if he was putting if he was so if he was put on Friday okay it's not Friday anymore it's Saturday because so was he put on the day of Sabbath because uh, yeah, you ha basically you can't crucify someone on the Sabbath yes so he was remember he was only on the cross for like one hour according to the Gospel of John three hours according to the Gospel of Mark and whatever um, and the earth went dark so we know it was he had to come down before it was yeah. time so by the time they're taking him down this that the other taken into the tomb it's 100% Sabbath started. I mean can we establish that or was he do you have evidence to establish that it was the Sabbath that he would have been? we can only use a probability that the, we know that the, the, they wanted to crucify him um, we know it was the Jews who wanted to crucify him and they knew that they couldn't crucify anyone on the Sabbath which would mean they would have to get it done before the Sabbath started therefore they would have left him as, up as long as possible before they take it down now if that was me or you we'd think you know what technically Sabbath's gonna start in half an hour let's start bringing him down and by the time taking him down this other that, taking him wherever you're gonna take him arrange who's gonna take him get to where you're gonna take him rolling the stone back and all that business putting the stone back I'm pretty sure that that time would elapse okay so, the probability okay but then if we are saying it's quite probable it then would clash with um, let's say Joseph of Arimathea burying Jesus right. because why would he bury him and work on the Sabbath because he'll be burying him on the Sabbath wouldn't that? Two, three. yes yes so that couldn't be that so it must be then prior to the Sabbath yeah. that he buried him so then that would be Friday no, which that he was buried to say that. Saturday who says Joseph of Arimathea buried him okay we can go to that point and we need to establish that but and so no, no, let's establish that. No, 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 no. One second. Bible no, which gospel, right? Stop, stop, Okay, but I'll say my point once we're looking. Go on, go on, go on. So Joseph oh, Ramon Fair, yeah. Joseph Ramon Fair, okay. okay, was a Jew, and he wouldn't have worked on the Sabbath. Just pass the Bible a second, Nana. Yeah. He wouldn't have worked on the Sabbath by burying him on a Saturday, so he would have done it prior could, to could the Could they bury somebody on the Sabbath? Okay, okay. Second, I don't know about that. I'm not checking that. Can they bury someone on the Sabbath? Okay, but one second. Okay, so let's say he... Uh, let's mess him up with the NIV. No, but NIV is not that accurate, if we're honest. You want to go to ESV? I've got ESV right. here. ESV is the same. No, so it's not more accurate. This is more a paraphrase version. Uh, I, I, th I think it's more the same. More the same. Okay. I'm sorry? Go on, carry on, carry on, carry on. Okay, so... All right, so you're saying the probability is... You're no, saying... So, so, one second. All right, so can I they bury someone on the Sabbath? So I, I don't know. My, I say my claim. Okay. Go on. So, um... He was buried, so, as it seems, Joseph Mar Arimathea was a Jew who buried him. And if we assume that Jews cannot work at all on the Sabbath, okay, that would have been a work by burying someone in a tomb. So that means that he would have buried him prior to the Sabbath starting, and that would be Friday, okay? No. So if it was crucified Friday, then it should be Friday. It should be buried before the sunset. So, he, so, so it should be, it, as soon as sunset, is Sabbath start. That's no, 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 no. Well, he's going, I understand his claim. He's saying, he's saying, if the Jews can't bury someone on the Sabbath, that means he needs to be taken down before the Sabbath begins. Yes. And put in the tomb before the Sabbath begins. Yeah, that is the Friday, so Friday, Friday night sunset. So no, no. So what he's basically—I understand his claim. I don't know whether the answer is can, can a Jew bury someone on the Sabbath? I need a Jew to answer that question. Even commonly, if we say, no, one second, one second, one second. I'll, I'll okay. see right. you on uh, uh, in three days time. Okay. Sabbath start. You you start from the day no, you, no, no, you are saying. We know when the Sabbath begins. The question is this: is like he said, can you take a body to a tomb on the Sabbath. No. Because you can't work again. This is what I'm saying to you. Okay, so. so he may be correct on that. Okay. I might have to allow that, but I don't know. I need a okay. Jew to tell me okay, that. Okay, that's fine. And so. whether or not in this case, because of the urgency of the case, whether or not, I don't know. But carry on. This is Jesus supposed to be God, isn't it? I'm sure they might have made an exception. But anyway, continue. I'll allow it for now. Okay. Um, so then that means that there would have been three days that he would have been in the earth and three nights he would have been in the earth. And so I don't see what the issue is with the council. Jesus said, Jonah wore three days and three nights in the middle of the way. No, 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 If I say I'll see you It's a good point you've made. It's a good point you've made. I'm including night and days. It's debatable, but... Quran doesn't say reject the, 
See, the question is this: if this is, if using this kind of thing, the Jews don't want the Sabbath. Yeah. Why are the Pharisees running around like ants on the Saturday, on the Sabbath, saying to run it, run into um, Pilate? Oh, he said he's going to be raised, and all this business. They're not exactly not working. But then, yeah, you wouldn't really say that to work. Right? Well, that, that that that's where the that's yeah, where we'd I, argue. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not apparently they're not yeah. allowed to switch a light on. I'm not an expert on this, so I don't. I'm know. not either. There's someone. I don't know if you'll be interested. <laughs> no, but at least we can find out. Is there a Jew? Is there a Jew? Where is? We need to do one over there. Go, go grab the juice.